Okay, 6.2 factoring trinomials. MA912, AR3.8. We are going to factor trinomials of the form x squared plus vx plus c, factor trinomials in two variables, and factor trinomials completely. Examples one to three. So the first one says x squared minus 5x plus 6. So we have three terms. When we go to this, if the first position has no value, there's a variable coefficient of 1. Your coefficient is 1. You're going to look at the end piece. So we are going to do a crossbar, put a multiplication dot on the top, and a plus sign on the bottom. You want numbers that multiply to 6. So we're looking for the factors of 6. So 6 is 6 and 1, 2 and 3, negative 2, negative 3, negative 6, negative 1. And the reason being I picked positives and negatives is two positives multiply to be a positive and two negatives multiply to be a positive. But then what do they add up to be? We need to add to be negative 5 because that is our middle term. This is what you're looking for. The two numbers have to multiply to the top and add to the bottom. So in order to get negative 5 and a positive 6, I have to look at negative 2 and negative 3. So you're just going to draw two parentheses. And we're going to write negative, negative, because they both need to be negative numbers. The x's, power of 2, split between the two bubbles. So I have an x times x. There's my x squared. To get 5, we said it's negative 2 and negative 3. So I'm going to write a negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 gives you 6. Negative 2 plus negative 3 gives you negative 5. And we're factored. When we look at b, it says 14 plus 5x minus x squared. First thing, it's not in order. So you want to always put it in standard form. So first rearrange it. So I'm just going to go negative x squared, positive 5x, positive 14. The next thing is you are not allowed to have a negative at the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a negative 1 out of every piece. So now I have negative 1 on the outside. And then we have positive x squared, negative 5x, negative 14 to work with. So now I'm working with this piece. We are looking at negative 14. So that is what's going to be at the top of your crossbar. And then we have to add to negative 5. So 14, we have 14 and negative 1, negative 14 and positive 1 because they need to be a negative when they multiply. We have 2 and negative 7 and negative 2 and positive 7. Remember, we need to add to negative 5. To get negative 5, you need to be a positive 2 and a negative 7 because they are going to give you a negative response when they add up together. So you're going to draw two. You have your negative 1, your two parentheses. Again, power of 2, split the x's. And then we have to have a plus minus situation. One's a positive, one's a negative. We said the 2 had to be the positive number. The seven had to be your negative number. On C, it says x squared minus 8x minus 48. So 48 is the number we're looking for. So you're going to have 40, negative 48 at the top of the crossbar. At the bottom, we're going to have a negative 8 because they need to add to negative 8. So 48, we have 12 and 4, 48 and 1, 6 and 8. I didn't put the plus minus situations because we can figure that out. In order to be a negative, your bubbles have a pattern. So if you are a negative at the top, your bubbles have to go plus minus. If you are a positive at the top, your bubbles could go negative, negative, positive, positive. So since we're looking for the negative one, we need to be with this pattern. So I know that my two bubbles, one is going to be positive, one is going to be negative. I know for a fact that power of two means I have two x's, so they split. Now I need to get to get negative eight. In order to get negative eight, the bigger number of my two has to be the, the negative number. So if I add 12 and four, I get 16. If I subtract them, I get eight. In order to get negative eight, the 12 had to be the negative, the four had to be the positive, and then you're done. When we look at D, it says x squared plus 7x minus 30. So again, 30 is what I'm looking for, 7 is what they need to add to. So you have negative 30 at the top of the crossbar. They need to add to positive 7. 
because I notice it's negative, I need to be the negative pattern, which is negative positive. So you're gonna draw two parentheses. One's gonna be negative, the other one's gonna be a positive number. We know that the X is split. Now factors of 30, we have 10 and three, 15 and two, five and six. If I add 10 and three, I get 13. If I subtract them, I get seven, which is what I'm looking for. So to get a positive seven, the 10 had to be the positive number. The three had to be your negative number. Example four says the area of the rectangle shown below is X squared plus 30 X plus 200 square feet. What is the area of the shaded region? So they gave us a big rectangle that was a piece cut out. So the big rectangle has a length of X plus 10, or width of actually of X plus 10, but we don't know our length here. So we need to work around our pieces. So they told us the area and they told you the width. So first thing, area of a rectangle is length times width. They told you the area was X squared plus 30 X plus 200. And that's when we said equal to our width was we don't know our length. So our length is going to be L and then our width is X plus 10. Because I need to find out what our length is, what represents our length. So then we're gonna divide both sides by X plus 10. So we need to know how many times does X plus 10 go into X squared plus 30 X plus 200. So let's look at our factoring. We're just gonna factor X squared plus 30 X plus 200 for right now. So 200 is the top of our crossbar. It needs to add the 30 on the inside. Well, 200 is 200 times one, 20 times 10, four times 50. 40 times five. And remember, we need to add the 30. The only one that's gonna add to 30 is 20 and 10. So here's our two bubbles. And we already knew that one of our factors was X plus 10. So then the other one has to be our X plus 20. So we know what the re value of our length is. The entire piece is right here at X plus 20. So we know that this entire thing is X plus 20, which means if I take away the X, I'm left with 20. So our length of the shaded region is 20. Our width of the shaded region, which they told us was 10. So they wanna know the area of the shaded region. So area equals length times width, 20 times 10, it is 200 square feet. In examples A through 10, so they want us to factor again and it's told us 2x squared minus 12x plus 10. So first thing I noticed the first position is not a one, but the first term has a two, the second term has a 12, and the third term has a 10, which means they have a GCF in common. So first thing we got to do is take out the GCF. So I'm taking out two out of each of them. I cannot take the variables because this has two X's, this has one X and this has zero X's. So we're factoring out a two first. So two take away the two leaves you with X squared. 12, negative 12 divided by two is negative six with an X. 10 divided by two is a positive five. So now I need to factor the bubble piece. Five is the top of the crossbar. It needs to add to negative six. Well, five is five and one is the only factors that can multiply to give you five since five is a prime number. And if they're both negative, they're gonna give you negative six. So in our two bubbles, the two came down. They have to have two negative values because they need to multiply to be positive. We have X minus one and X minus six and we're factored. On B, it says 3x to the third minus 27x to the second plus 54x. So first thing I noticed that first position is not a one, but three can go into 27 and can go into 54. So first thing I need to factor out is a three out of each of them. Then I look at the variables, three x's, two x's, one x. They all share an x in common, so I can take out an x as well. 
So 3x is the front of your parentheses. 3 divided by 3 leaves you with 1. 3x's took 1 away. I have 2x's left over. Negative 27 divided by 3 is negative 9. 2x's took 1 away. I have an x. Plus sign. 54 divided by 3 is 27. X's took the x away. I'm no x. Example 8 to 10. It says 2x squared minus 12x plus 10. First thing I notice is the first position is not a 1. So they has a 2. We have a 12 and 10. They both have a, they all have a GCF in common. So first thing we're going to do is pull out a 2 out of each of them. So 2 is now going to become in front of the parentheses. And then we're going to reduce. So 2x squared take out the 2. I have x squared. Negative 12x divided by 2. I have negative 6x. 10 divided by 2, I have a positive 5. Now I'm looking for the 5. So the 5 is what I'm looking for numbers of. They can multiply to become multiply to 5 and add to be negative 6. Well, 5 can only be 5 and 1 because it's a prime number. So I know that we're going to have two parentheses. The 2 that we took out slides down the page. We don't lose it. In order to be a negative 6 and multiply to be positive 5, I need to be two negative numbers. So they both have x squared, so I'm going to split my x. To get 5, it's 5 and 1. If I put negative 5 and negative 1, they multiply to be positive 5, and they add to be negative 6. When we look at b, it says 3x cubed minus 27x squared plus 54x. First thing, 3, 27, and 54. Three common numbers, and they're all factors of the number 3. So I know that I have to divide out of 3. 3x's, 2x's, 1x, they all have an x in common, so I'm also taking out an x. That is going to be the front of your parentheses. When we reduce it, 3x cubed, divide 3x, I still see x squared. Negative 27x squared, divide 3x, I see negative 9x. Positive 54x divided by 3x leaves me with positive 18. So now 18 is what I'm looking for. That is at the top of the crossbar and needs to add to be negative 9. So 18, we have 18 and 1, 3 and 6, 2 and 9. To get 9, 3 and 6 are the only two numbers that would add to 9. So you have 3x sliding down, you have two parentheses. Now to become negative 9 and add a positive and multiply to be positive 18, they need to both be negative. So they both share an x. And we said 3 and 6, so I'm going to be a negative 3 and a negative 6, and we're factored. On C, it says 4y to the 4th plus 32y to the 3rd plus 28y to the 2nd. Again, 4, 32, and 28. They are both all factors of the number 4. Then we look at our variables. 4y's, 3y's, 2y's, they all share 2y's in common. So 4y squared is the outside of your parentheses. So 4y to the 4th, divide 4y squared, I see y squared. Positive 32y to the 3rd, divide 4y squared. 32 divided by 4 is an 8. 3y's took 2, I have 1. 28, positive 28y squared divided by 4y squared. So positive 28 divided by 4 is a positive 7. 2y's took 2y's, there is no y. So now, 7 is the top of the crossbar, and you need to add to 8 at the bottom. Well, 7 is a prime number, which can be only be 7 and 1. So we still see 4y squared. You have two parentheses. In order to be positive 7 and positive 8, they need to both be positive. y squared, they share a y. 1 and 7, they add to be 8, and they multiply to be 7.